It's January 31st, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me scary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. We've been determined likes episode number uh, uh, 588. Uh, it's our what's going on for the, the for the month of January because, you know, it's the 31st. It's what better to do the last day of the month is to talk about what we did this month. Let's find out. So I realized I have a lack of motivation for doing anything at work right now. Absolutely mm. anything. Mm. The only thing that I have motivation for is wow. That's it. So. Um, sounds about on brand. Yeah. That's, that, that's my January, really. Playing a lot of wow. Streaming it. You can find that streaming on oh, uh, youtube.tv slash comes out loud or the live uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays uh, on uh, uh, twitch.tv slash windgem, W Y N D G E M. Where there's there also go. bears and dragons. Plug. See? That, that, that was the point. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless promotion and plugging of our own shows. Like, let's. let's well, <laughs> well, but like this, this last week, though, Wednesday. Wait, wait, no, this was it this last week that I did it. Oh, I, I think I actually had to work on Wednesday. No, mm. no, 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 no. That was the previous week, I think. I can't remember. My brain is hurting. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was the previous week because that was the inauguration. Um, mm -hmm. I had to work on a Wednesday and I then took that Friday off. So my streaming schedule is just like shifted. Mm -hmm. days. Uh, but uh, this last Wednesday, instead of streaming WoW, I spent five hours creating two subclasses. Oh, God. And I streamed that. So that is available on a um, thing. I think I might have to re-export some stuff back to... Or have to export some things, which I haven't done for Thursday streams for the uh, thing. Mm. But, uh Yeah. And it's like, even like my downtime, I just make sure that I can hear the dings from the chat and I come over here and play WoW during work. Oh when, my. When, when they're, when I'm not doing anything else. And I'm, I suppose oh there might be some other like minor little things, but no one's really assigned me anything. So I'm like, eh, whatever. I have motivation to, 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 I just don't feel any motivation to actually like, jump in and like work on some extra things that they don't tell me to do that I could do so and there's things that yeah. I could do I just you know it hasn't really been assigned to me I didn't mm -hmm. say hey I need this done it it's like there's no nothing I need to do but there's things I could do so again lack of motivation for doing any of that but mm. I have plenty of motivation to uh, putz around all day and while so Anyways, that's me. Damon? Fair. Um, let me get back to the doc. Uh, so, the fun thing usually about January for me is um, if I don't have any, P if I have PTO left over, I have to use it or I lose it. So, um, one of the things that I have done this month in particular was I took off every Friday. Um, I had like four, I had four and a half days left. I took a half day on a Thursday, like earlier in the month, um, to go to a doctor's appointment and just do random shit. And then I've had every Friday off. So it's been very nice, but it definitely throws off the weekend, you know, having an extra day where you can sleep in and do nothing kind of thing or do stuff, but not like work. Um, so every weekend I have to remind myself what day it is. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that is part of why I have a Sunday routine before the podcast, because that's how I remind myself to keep reminding myself that it's Sunday. Um, did you order yeah. breakfast? Yeah, I did. And they forgot the drink this time, not the food this time. Ooh. So that's nice. 
So I still, I, I got another crutch. It is fine. Whatever. You know, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to do this one more time through, through DoorDash. I'll use DoorDash. And if they don't get two bags again, I'm going to have a fit. And I'm just going to say like, like it, if whose fault is it is what it kind of, kind of come, come down to. Mm-hmm. Is it McDonald's fault for not putting the one in two bags or two, you know, two bags are, is it the driver's fault who's just not paying attention and just grabs a bag? Mm-hmm. I mean, at least this time they grabbed the bag that actually has the tag on it that has the like order number and stuff. So they knew it was mine. Like grabbing just the drink bag from last week, I was kind of like, well, why did you just grab that one? It didn't even have any of this like, like pickup order and um, a, a label attached so that you knew it was for this order. So whatever. Anyway. Past that. Um, beyond that, um, I put down D and D machine. Uh, I, as I've mentioned, I'm doing one shot D and D games at a local comic book shop. Um, and actually, yesterday, um, I got involved in a new campaign. So um, very interesting. Um, a weird dynamic between the other players. Um, so they're all essentially connected to the to the DM. And I know the DM, but I'm not like long time, long term friends with them or anything like that. So mm-hmm. I know him. Loose acquaintance. We've known each other. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of an acquaintance thing. So but um he knows me well enough to know like I don't give it. I, I won't give any shits. Like meaning that I won't take any shits, I should say. So um, this is going to be an interesting game because they're all laughing and joking with him and playing with him and poking fun at him. And I'm kind of like just sitting there like, okay, like let's, let's move on. Let's keep going. I'm going to be the one that's going to get the game moving (laughs) because they tend to go off in tangents. Sounds familiar. Um, if you watch, if you watched any Bears and Dragons, yeah. dot dot dot. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to I'm going to try my best to stay as focused as I can on like the actual campaign and the game. I like my character, which is always a plus. And tell me about your character. Um, hmm? Tell me about your character. Maybe after the show because we were running on a time. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the the idea of being, um, I like my character and I like what I'm doing and I like what we're doing. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. Um, yeah. So D and D all the time now, and our the game I was playing, our DM is now becoming a little bit more active in our chat. He hasn't indicated that he's ready to return to playing the game, but. I have a feeling that's going to be coming up in a near future. So if that happens, I will be in two D and D games, another campaign for vampire. And then whenever I do a one shot, you're, you're, you're playing more RPG than I am. Mm-hmm. Love it. Anyway, that's me. I, I'm Gary. Anyways, <laughs> Gary. Um, so we're, uh, a month into 2021 Mm -hmm. already, you know, we made it through the year that everybody despises and apparently we're just, you know, not going to really want to talk about in the future. Just going to act like it didn't happen. Um, as a joke, obviously people. So yeah, it's been an interesting month. Uh, Work has shifted for me. Um, our new COVID team locally at my job uh, is getting up and running. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was informed that I wasn't going to be really working on that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I also made it to my one year anniversary mm-hmm. um, at the Department of Health. So uh, yeah. Um, and because of all that, uh, I put in a request and I got approved for my part-time job. I am going to be uh, adding one evening and switching the days up. Uh, so I'm going to have my 
extended weekends, it'll be a little easier. Uh, yeah, so nice. it's been a pretty good month overall. Um, still handling dad's stuff. Um, the finances. Uh, so for those that don't know, my father last year um, in August went into a long-term care facility. Um, his medical, physical, like, and stuff needs, like, I'm just not equipped to take care of. And he had him taken a fall and had to go to the hospital. And he was not uh, bouncing back, quote-unquote, out of that particular stay. And so uh, we went through the, I went through the process as a uh, healthcare power of attorney and next of kin and all that to maneuver some things. So you end up with what's called a transition period. So you end up with um, basically about six months to get um, kind of things lined up paperwork wise mm -hmm. and finances and other stuff. So yeah, so that's been a, a whole um, thing to come out of that in that time. So, and uh, on Friday, yeah, two days ago, um, I got my first vaccination shot. Oh, that's right. Um, so the, I know that there's lots of people who want to get a vaccination and some people are understandably upset because there isn't a clear protocol um yes there's like phases and like stages and you know each state is doing their own program and all this kind of stuff but um really what we've been finding out from the new administration is is that like there there is not a plan quote unquote universally that makes sense of everything mm -hmm. and so in theory we have 50 different states with 50 different strategies 50 different programs 50 different like possibilities of the pipeline um, that was not being overseen or understood um, and plus the U.S. territories. I mean, so like there's, there's just a ton of things logistically that have been figured out about it. Um, I have become addicted to a new reality TV show. It's called The White House Press Secretary, Jen Psaki, um, because we actually get them and <laughs> she's amazing. Like she mm. used to be the deputy uh, communications director, I believe. Uh, under Obama, she had several different positions. She's worked in public and in private and in government sectors, and she just she handles it so well. Um, mm. And a lot of people have caught like that she isn't shady, but she definitively knows how to handle um, the press in some ways, specifically when they ask certain kind of questions. My favorite was, well, being that it is day X of the new administration. Like, <laughs> as I have said for the last X number of days, like, I mean, just, <laughs> yeah, it, it cracks me up because I'm like, oh, girl, you're the one that sends the per my previous email. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> so, so yeah, anyways, that's, that's like my newest um, addiction thing is watching uh, her and the, and the press briefings and stuff. And um, I officially followed the oh what the heck is it called i gotta look it up online um did you know first off uh with the new administration and i'm apologizing to everybody that like, i'm talking politics a little bit but uh did you know that the <clears throat> uh president and uh their wife has a uh rescue dog um, and that they uh, actually have two dogs and now a cat in the White House, which is like causing all this like stuff, apparently. Um, and that they uh, created a Twitter account. Oh, oh do they have like uh, Dotus and, and, and Codus? <laughs> they do. They created merch <clears throat> because that's how good they are about that oh this is gonna drive me crazy because i'm trying to figure out how the hell to fucking log out of twitter to get into the other account why is there no logout twitter what are you doing twitter why are you pissing me off <laughs> you should be able to like add an account i can switch between uh -oh. my accounts so i know but it's not even giving me that what, what oh, is that? Yeah. i'm just yeah. stuck in it how do i get the fudge out of it why is there like no logout i don't know i'm on my browser and i can Hi. just click the three dots next to, to the account name and uh, uh i have like the account i want to switch to 
Now I have three dots next to more, and then I get topic, moments, ads, analytics, privacy, help Are center you display. The app or, the web, or, or, or browser? Browser. Twitter.com. I don't understand. Twitter, give me an image. Anyways. Um, what do they call it? They It's called the POFIS. No, it's going to The Oval POFIS. P-A-W-F-F-I-C-E. Ah. The POFIS of Dotus and Codus. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. And then, and this is the weirdest thing by far, um, they posted this yesterday. Friends, meet Alexandria Ocasio Court hyphen Hedge. She oh, is no. now our hashtag Secretary of State, hashtag spiky cuteness. Um, at AOCH is a comprehensive resume, has a comprehensive resume with vast experience as a Democrat hedgehog for the 35th Congressional District of Texas. She is also versed in fur in affairs and policy. Oh, the no, puns, honey. People, the puns. The puns. Those oh, puns. Oh, my gosh. I love this. I was switching to my. Uh, 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 <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, P A W F F I C E uh, for those oh, of you no. who are looking for it for, for you. <laughs> I'm totally so, following that. Of if Otis you and, and if you follow the timeline far oh enough like, to yesterday, you see they have a a, lug, a line of mugs, one for hashtag CODIS, two for the different dotuses because there are two different uh, uh, canines. And then one that just has the emblem with the paw. And that's, anyways, it's silly. It's, it's, it's anyways. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's been a, a whole bunch of things that have gone on uh, with that in the past month. Um, so I, I guess I just want to say this because uh, and then we'll move on. Uh, I don't know if it's been the past month, but I know the past couple of months, it's been getting rough. Um and, and it's bumming a lot of people out, at least close people to me, that we keep hearing about um, folks who are not making it um, through COVID or uh, mm -hmm. or it's difficult to, to, to kind of discern or filter out because of COVID. Like, would these individuals who pass on have been passing on anyways? Do you know what I mean? Like, even though yeah. it, COVID isn't a factor, um, and right last night when I went to bed, uh, I found out that Damon and I know someone um, online that passed away uh, just a couple days ago, and they kept their health very private. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nobody knew anything. Uh, yeah. So I went to sleep last night really, really in a in a certain mindset because um, I've known this individual and their husband for many years. Um, they've been to Drench Fur. In the past, they were part of the Berg Bears when I was involved with that organization um, out of Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. PA. A long, long time. That's how I met them. I met them. I met them when they met, and when then when they dated, and then like mm. uh, I, yeah. knew them in, I knew them in other jobs in other cities, and locations. Um, wow. So that was a big shock yesterday. Um, oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And that was yeah. pretty consistently a, a lot of people's comments and responses. Um, finding out i could not believe when i saw uh, a mutual friend had commented and shared and that this person had passed away um so <clears throat> and it's not that and, you know it's not the first and it's not that this person is su super s significant quote unquote like in the broader bear community it's just that you know when you have hundreds of people uh that, in the venn diagram that kind of cross over um mostly this is kind of a geographic thing up in the northeast uh yeah, so it's it's um it's a little rough, you know. Yeah. To you know, yeah to handle those those kind of things, and it's not just you know uh, acquaintances and friends. I mean, it's you know there's also been you know folks that we um, know that it's their loved ones and and families and and stuff that are dealing with all sorts of things. So um, as much as this month has been a good month. Um, theoretically, uh, yeah, it's um, it's been something else. So I'm hopeful that uh, we are on the uptrend 
as the year goes on. Um, and I think what, what people are still struggling with um, just in general is we, at least I will say this is the U S we've really adapted to convenience uh, whether it be technology or not, uh, and the immediacy of how things can happen. So do I need something? Do I want something? Like, so Damon wakes up in the morning, he orders his breakfast, and, you know, someone someone makes it, a, bunch of, a whole bunch of people work together to make it, another person, you know, picks it up, delivers it, and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. That's not technically an immediate gratification, but it's a pretty quick cycle to, like, from the moment that you desire to the moment you get what you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the longitude, like in the long game, I think that's the, that's where people lack the patience and they get really frustrated because they're like, you know, why can't I get like, and it's like, well, because it takes time, <laughs> you yeah. know, like it, it doesn't happen um, relatively quickly. And like something, Jeff, you said earlier, which I think is really important is like time um, has no meaning, like when when you live in a rinse repeat cycle of life and if things don't really change a lot around you it's difficult to gauge and be like wait what day what day is it what week like is it a weekend like what what's going on so if there's not a lot of um, change in variety and this isn't a criticism it does uh, i think it makes it that much more challenging to look at stuff and be like oh yeah it's already the end of january like this is the fifth sunday uh you know syndrome situation whatever uh or fourth, which are, and how we're, I think, um, losing perspective. But I don't think that's anyone's fault. It's more about, you know, how much are we able to grasp the day to day and then look back and see, like, what's happened across that time and then also to be apply that to the future. So, yes, by the end of the year, I really truly do believe, like, the vast amount of Americans that want to be vaccinated can be vaccinated and we will see the economy. Um, continue to move up we will see you know individuals having jobs less unemployment i mean i think a lot of things will be on the positive it'll just take a while to get there Mm -hmm. so yeah like i'm not even expecting vaccination for several several months and with all hopes that they can get because we can now have a third vaccine that's might be coming available with from johnson johnson that I'm hoping that we can get more out and uh, that things such as like my my work, since I'm affiliated with a Fortune 500 company, that when mm-hmm. they do mm-hmm. want us to go back to the office, they, um, which might be within the next couple of months, which kind of makes me a little upset, um, mm-hmm. that as part of that they'll be like hey we're going to actually have on-site vaccinations you're going to come in you're going to get your first vaccination yeah uh, and we're still going to have the regular protocols everybody's six feet apart and uh, masks etc 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 uh until you know we're in a more uh, safe space and then uh and that's what I'm hoping for. I, I don't know if it's the case, but um, I honestly do not feel safe until A, I'm vaccinated, and B, every single other person that I work with is vaccinated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and that's, I think, what is going to be challenging. And, I, and there's definitely one thing right now that my understanding and this could be wrong, but uh, my my background says that like my my understanding of it is pretty true. Is just because a person is vaccinated um, and has their double doses and is outside the window for their antibody uh, ramp up, does not mean that a person can't contract. It just means yeah. it's less likely. And mm-hmm. what's more important is that like you, we don't know for certain yet if because you're vaccinated you can't pass on the virus to someone who isn't vaccinated. So that's that's always kind of been a key principle. Just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean that you can't be a carrier. Mm-hmm. So like that's one of the the 
items I think that will be a challenge as the year goes on and we say we get to summer and um, as Fauci has said uh, and they've you know been consistent with this messaging you know that they really do believe that we if we can get the the production ramped and the distribution um, you know kind of squared up uh, for our country then we could theoretically you know see by the end of summer most individuals or all individuals have the opportunity to be vaccinated um, and that's a huge huge thing but mm -hmm. it's going to take time to get there and to do that and right now i think people are kind of okay because i mean it's january 31st like ain't a whole lot going on right now um you know i know that the super bowl is coming up and that people are you know planning parties and um that's a thing because mm -hmm. <laughs> i think that there's still folks that just kind of don't care don't get it well they don't get it yeah you know, or they, you know, they, they see the facts that they want to see. They believe what they want to believe. Um, and if anything's come out of the past four years, definitely now there's this um, position, transition, uh, rec recognition. I don't know what I want to call it. Uh, reconciliation within ourselves to be like, oh, not only did I perhaps over the past couple of years learned that there are some people who are not in alignment with me in terms mm -hmm. of politics. Now it's going maybe another level that if you've removed some individuals, that there are still individuals that you say to yourself, head scratch, like you, like you, you in science, not not um, not cool, not good, like I, what? Huh? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So um, in any case, it's been it's been interesting. So that's been the month of January. You know what? I think it's time for this. Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Uh, oh, well, <laughs> Facebook's adjacent. Well, there's nothing typically for us for Facebook, but I have been reading articles that Mark Zuckerberg's in, uh, uh, Berg. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, he's in hot water. Um, Facebook's like getting a lot of crap. So who knows if that platform's going to change? Um, mm. Well, you know, just now, now apparently they're going to start pulling certain types of ad content and they're going to be less political and blah, blah, blah. It's like, really, girl? Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something tells me because Congress is saying you're too big and you need to be broken up into smaller pieces. Suddenly you're paying attention. Whatever. Uh -oh. So that being said, uh, over at Instagram, we got a new follower. Funk tree boy. <laughs> mm, I don't know who that is. Who could that be? No clue. Don't, I don't no know. idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're kidding, obviously. Uh, that happens to be Jeff Rockham. Uh, we also got some comments over on Instagram. So at EAC Therapy LLC. Hmm. Mm, who could that be? They mentioned us in a comment and said, had the great pleasure of speaking with at Cubs Out Loud about authenticity. Stay tuned for more information. Hashtag authenticity. Hashtag Brene Brown. Hashtag therapy. Hashtag vulnerability. Hashtag psychotherapy. Hashtag courage. Hashtag empathy. Hashtag compassion. I'm not putting all those into hashtags. Just <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Ed, but no. <laughs> yeah. Um, and anyway. I can't remember if I went over this one or not last month, so I'm just going to stick it in. Uh, at... A Cruz 197421 commented, wishing you all and your families a Merry Christmas as well as a joyous New Year. Yay. So thank Yay. you. Ooh, we got some stuff. We got some stuff. Yeah, somebody doesn't read into the, the document to stay ahead I of was. Oh, hey, oh, hey, 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 for the record, the stuff that David has, most of it, I put in during pre show. So, <laughs> okay. Both, the, like, to your like, quarters. Like, <laughs> never mind. Say, Moving on. I didn't see that a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> I got on the dock this morning. <laughs> like, excuse me. Anyway, um, so we got a new YouTube subscriber, um, View Glar. Welcome. And we have several comments on um, our YouTube episodes. So from episode 587, um, the Nash production said, Age has been kind to you three. Woof. Well, thank you for that. Uh, and then, then, then Lucy added Gary's wig was serving ABBA like Dancing Queen <laughs> Ooh, girl. And, uh -oh. and if I'm correct that, that wasn't a wig <laughs> <laughs> no 
that was that was your hair. That was his hair. Way. That was Mr. Gary's hair. Don't Maybe let that. the shirt fool you. <laughs> that was that was not a costume. <laughs> Gary has grown. Gary has Girl. grown. <laughs> okay. So for um, 586, our What is Authenticity episode, um, Bernie Burtface res- responded. Um, Great show again, guys. Being authentic is the fastest way to know your people, who your people are, and those that aren't. Not everyone has to like you, and not everyone will. True. Um, people pleasing only attracts users. This is no. This in no way advocates being horrible to anyone. Just be open, honest, and extremely mindful of your of, mm-hmm. of own heart and who you choose to give it to. So fair, very fair. Mm-hmm. And then um, Din Din Moshi um, replied, um, I have to say I rolled my eyes when I read the title of this episode, but I'm glad I watched. I disagree on some points on the concept of authenticity based on the definition mentioned because it sounded like, quote, in a perfect world type of, type of a statement. And I don't believe saying it's a choice is fair because then other factors come to play like age, time, and social status. Nonetheless, an interesting topic, and I like it when Ed is around. So, and then P.S., excuse me, um, Gary laughs like Nicki Minaj. I'm giving very much, it's giving very much Roman revenge, and the answer is yes. (laughs) Okay. To that question, Gary, what question? I'm not recalling this is even yeah. though this is just what two weeks ago episode yeah, yeah. i'm not Oscar remembering Martin. that's all good it happens so um yeah okay and then on col uh, 585 all no shade the lgbtq being messy birdie birdface replied um it's it's a real shame that there are adults who continuously refuse to think rationally and with compassion until it's too late and they're not only rolling the dice for themselves, but every single person they are in close proximity to. Selfish is as selfish does, I guess. Question mark. Hang in there, guys. The vaccine is coming. Sadly, only for COVID and not for stupidity. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> there, yeah. There is no vaccine for stupidity. There is no vaccine for ignorance either. So, yeah. So that's that. Yes got some proofs coming from our, for our from our comments on YouTube. Let's just do that. <laughs> Oof. Oh boy. Anyways. Moving on over into the Twitterverse. Uh, we've got uh, new followers in Elika Adio. Uh, Navin Huai. Uh, Zero Zero Ty Telesnaps. Bear 84 Chocolate. Michael West 1972. Mud oh, Cub and RT2305. No super long sets of numbers. I'm satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, let's let's talk about uh, uh what what did we talk about during the month of January? Uh well since the last time uh at 583 when we did the December what's going on, um on 584 we did a 2020 year in review. Yay. Um which I think people were like by title interested in. However, we didn't really talk about what happened in 2020. Like we didn't do a breakdown of like, let's talk about the dumpster fire that was 2020, <laughs> like and break down everything. Cause it would have been a multi-series, multi-hour show. Yeah. Like, we just kind of talked more about, um, you know, our perspectives on the year. Uh, 585, then we did that Alti No Shade LGBTQ being messy. Uh, for those of you that aren't sure what that was about, um, it was prompted by the fact that a bunch of uh, um, fagulas, uh, members of the LGBTQ plus <laughs> community, they went to Puerto Vallarta in Mexico at like basically a big rave dance party and got caught on film. And then, oh, that's right, some of them were in a boat and it sank uh, <laughs> in, in the ocean, the sort of beach oh, area, yeah, bay, yeah. something. And they sank, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there was a lot of Schadenfreude going on um, and opinion uh, stuff, you know, happening. So that was that. Um, 586, what is authenticity? Uh, so that was Mr. Uh, Edward Angelini Cook, our um, 
you know, our uh, sex therapist um, returning and we had a discussion um, about that. And as always, Ed is a great guest and well prepared, um, <laughs> especially when it's a topic. Just look at the show notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When he's heavily engaged. Um, but yeah, that was a. Uh, that was a good show. And then uh, just last week, dun, 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 was 587, which was 13 years. 13 years of what, you may ask? Well, for those of you that are newer, hi, welcome to the show. Um, and this the this whole podcast thing, uh, 13 years ago, Mr. Jeffrey, our producer and co-host, uh, created this gig called Comes Out Loud with the original generation of uh, hosts. Yeah. So mm -hmm. with, if you include... For for the main series, at least, if you include everything that hasn't been marked as a as a regular numbered show, we probably have over six hundred episodes in wow. one way, shape, or form. And mm -hmm. we also have CLDR, which you guys started, um, mm -hmm. and obviously, I've added hours and hours of content uh, with <laughs> my with the streaming gig that I've been doing right now. So, yeah. Yeah, 13, there's a reason why we're at 588 <laughs> for an episode number. Yeah. So we, we've, um, in fact, for COLDR, we're, uh, we're about to record episode 111, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the last 110 one, or 111. 110. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So David and I have already cleared 100 on that alone. Good gracious. So, yeah, the the whole uh, enterprise. You started universe, season uh, seven? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We started with season seven. I, I randomly have that like linked in my mental lexicon of like a lexicon. Yeah. I, I think we, I might have been when I was doing the, the statistical analysis, I was looking back at that. Yeah. It's so yeah. weird when you think about it because that's six, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We're on 13. So that's seven seasons that we're going to be of running. Of the regular show. <laughs> Yeah, that's a regular show. Because <laughs> there um, was also what all stars <laughs> were uh, like three or four. I don't remember. I'm trying to think, we're on all stars. We did all stars five. Okay, but I don't think we did all stars one. I don't think we did the first all stars. But uh, I could be correct. We did, we started yeah. in season seven, and then the, of the all stars, we picked up on. Two. All stars two. So Got it. <laughs> two, three, four, and five. So yeah, it's it's been a shit. I was talking with um <laughs> yeah, I was talking with someone the other day. I, oh actually the guy who drove me home from gaming yesterday talking about the podcast thing because I told him what I was doing today and advised about like we we're we're doing, you know, we're talking about drag race and he knew what drag race was. And I'm like, oh, we're just focusing on here. You know, no drag race UK, no drag race Canada. No Drag Race Thailand, no Drag Race Holland, no no Drag Race Australia, like here. <laughs> Those two Just here one. in the United States. You guys been going got... crazy. You don't have the time. <laughs> no time. Speaking of time. Hey. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's move into this. <laughs> All right. That's enough of that, though. See if we can avoid a copyright claim. Even in any case, uh, I'm going to start off by saying biscuits in the snow. From earlier Aww. this month, believe it or not, Texas got snow. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, our, our our the delightfully adorable uh, fiery biscuits uh, uh, decided to show it off as well as his butt. Mm-hmm. Very fluffy snow. I know I'm looking at the snow first, but I mean it doesn't last long. It's like gone by the next day, but it did stick yeah. around for a little bit. I think I took a shot and, and posted it to my Facebook of, of some but it did like stay around for at least a little bit. <laughs> yeah. No less than a day, I'm sure. <laughs> but... Wow. Yes. Uh, it's had over, it's had nearly 11,000 views. Wow. He, he's a, he's a popular cubby. He's having a glow up for sure over the past mm -hmm. couple of years that we've known him. Yeah. Look at that butt. <laughs> Look at that butt. 
It's a cute little nom, bag. Nom, 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 nom. And you guys did get a, a bunch of snow, not just like, like. An a, inch. It looks like a couple of inches. Yeah. Right. Not just a coating. Not like you know, like. And if you're not paying, yeah, there was a little bit of a pile up. Thing. I mean, but you know, as I said, by the next day it was gone. <laughs> right now, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> well. Welcome, Welcome to, to Texas. To Texas, where where just yesterday it hit eighty degrees. Yeah, we had a heat wave. God bless, God bless it. Yeah. Oh. Anyways, moving on. Um. So I actually have two. Um. The first one um, is our friend, um, Mister Part Wolf, um, um, Mister Mark. Um, and he's in his purple undies, um, although that's really not all I'm looking at. Um, I, yeah, there's, oh, he's such a beautiful man. Like, I just can't, <laughs> like, just from, from, like, the tats to the, like, chest and, and the belly and the body and the legs and the thighs and the, yeah, just, and the beard and the eyes and the face and the yeah just yes. so I'm going to share him as often as possible whenever like, I need to because he's gotten back onto Twitter um, he was not as active and then recently he has become a little bit more active um, and the, yeah and he's he's always never he's not always been he's not always shy um, so yeah. Yeah. I will say this. Um, he was on our pedestal at one point, and mm -hmm. back when that happened, he had less ink than he has now. Mm -hmm. And his, and not that you know, he um, has gotten a ton more since then. But he's been filling in. Um, his whole body is a canvas in a way, and it's all mm -hmm. done just in, in black ink. Um, it's very artistic, um, and that was one of the things that drew me to him in the very beginning. And I was like, look at this man, like just covering mm -hmm. himself up. Um, and yeah, so, uh, and there's some symmetry to some aspects of, uh, his, his ink and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I, um, I remember, I, appreciate I remember when we <laughs> first met him and he, he had written on the back of some tidy whities comes out loud. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he did. Yep. 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 That he did. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So thank you, Mark. That is gorgeous. Um, we will I always appreciate you. Yes. So I did have another one, and this is a little bit more political, but and it's really gay. Just, just I'm going to preface it like that way. Um, this is the incomparable Bette Midler singing "Goodbye Donnie" a la "Hello Dolly," um, and it is. Goodbye, Donnie. Well, goodbye, Donnie. It's so nice you'll soon be right where you belong. Oh, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, it, it, if you want to hear is, the whole thing, it's only like a minute and ten seconds. <laughs> yeah, it is awesome. I love it. Um, I am happy she did it. Um, um, one of her last theater gigs, if I happen to look it up, um, was she did play um, Dolly on in Hello Dolly on Broadway. So, yeah, it was it was perfect, and it kind of summed up my feelings of the inauguration this year. So, goodbye, Donnie. <laughs> wow. Get the fuck out, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your lack of COVID vaccine will take you gone. <laughs> oh my. Anyway, so there's that. Gary, how about you? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. This was going to be one of my choices. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I've already got I've already got one one host's endorsement of my pick. Yeah. Um <clears throat> so I titled it How do you want me to take it? <laughs> because so it's a collage of four pictures a grouping and the last one is I think from Marvel I um, think it might have been from one of the Avengers movies right yeah. 
and so it's a screed still shot of uh help me guys who's Jeremy the Renner is Hawkeye there we go and so they superimpose the text over the top of it which is hysterical because like it follows up the series of these three beautiful photos of this gorgeous uh uh man who is let me double check I'm just gonna look at them all again yes he is in just boxers uh in all three pictures oh, he's Jesus Christ gorgeous Sorry. yeah um He's a big, uh, tall black man uh, who mm -hmm. I believe, I believe, if I read the the chat thread correctly, plays football and is the son of a college football coach mm -hmm. who um, is also a, a nice looking man, beautiful uh, man, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so my Jesus Christ from earlier, which were the father, just just FYI. <laughs> Because I hadn't seen those pictures yet. <laughs> anyway, um, so these pictures are um, from the Fenty, um, I think it's not Fenty Beauty or Savage Fenty, which is the Rihanna uh, makeup brand. And they also do clothing. And one of the things that they specifically do is um, plus size intimates. Mm. for men and women so this this guy is modeling these boxers for Fenty Beauty they have been taken entirely out of context so, don't, so <laughs> not to take not to make it negative but like these pictures are like meant to be like showing off the 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 underwear the the, the boxers and the boxer briefs that he's wearing and he, he's showing them off well don't get me wrong mm. um mm. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of the 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 where do these come from? Yeah. I'm also very intrigued at his. Uh, let me think about it. I guess I want to call it a tattoo, it, but I don't think it's technically a tattoo. It's either it's, a tattoo or a brand. As I say, it kind of looks like a brand. It looks like no matter what, it's skin scarring mm -hmm. on his uh, presumed his left bicep. Um, and really I don't know right quite what bicep. the symbol is. What's that? I think that's his right bicep. No, uh, no, you're right. Left bicep. And I'm right. Yeah. I'm so, my um, left and right. Oh, that's okay. Left. So I, I just really am intrigued by it because it kind of looks like an Omega symbol with uh, something else. But the thing for me is like persons of color, you don't see ink on them very often or any, um, body modifications per se to the skin because uh like if if it's done it's much more i think um personal because it mm -hmm. may not like show up as well not to say that white people are vain and they're constantly you know walking around you know wanting everyone to look at them that is not what i'm saying at all and that's not what i'm saying <laughs> about mark earlier but like it just it stands out more to me i think um and i was just like well what is that uh so yeah but yeah. the very first picture of the what in the group is you know like the most um mm -hmm. seductive uh <laughs> yeah yeah so um package tight yeah it's 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 a good picture like and if you around. go through the comments and you see the pictures uh of his family and you get the one of him and his and apparently his brother and his father um yeah there's a reason why someone commented and said damn suddenly i'm just a hole <laughs> <laughs> i love it oh jesus Ooh, I love it. Wow. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. He's got some good blood in that family. Mm hmm. They're beautiful. They're anyway. So, um, Texan. Yeah. Look yes, they are. They are. They are. Man. Uh, that's family. like, like, or at least his family. University of Texas, Texas, Austin. Yeah. Mm, girl. Anyway. No. <laughs> okay. Should we move into the links? Yeah, I think we we first it like like wipe the wipe the drill from your mouth. Let's let's then go into the. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so another thing <laughs> I've actually decided to spend a little money on was uh, subscribing to uh, 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 two apps, um, uh, Marvel Unlimited and DC Universe Infinite. Apparently, Universe was not enough, uh, and. It's basically 
I have access to so many comics right now. <laughs> it's dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah. I can reread the entire Nightfall saga. I can, can, I'm actually currently working my way through the entire, the entire Ultimate Universe from Marvel. Mm. Um, I, I found a reading order, but following that, wow! I, like there was this time where I was like right at the beginning, and I I was reading all the the, the original Ultimate Spider-Man, so I had already read read pretty much that uh, all the Peter Parker Ultimate Peter Parker stuff. And obviously a little bit into Miles Morales, which currently my reread through, I have not hit Miles yet. Mm. Um, it's it, but there was this like jump. There was a part that I completely like missed at one point, and then when I jumped back in, there was all these things that had happened, and I'm like, I have no idea how that happened. Now I can go back and reread. And read through that, and it's really exciting. Uh, DC Universe, I decided to try to go through some of the old events, and uh, uh, currently set for. Uh, 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 I'm currently at Legends, which is one of the very first ones, like right after the Fourth World. <sighs> this is before Crisis of Infinite Earth. Um, mm. Just kind of like going through that, I'm, I I can't wait to reread um, the annual event uh, Armageddon uh, two thousand one, and mm. then the uh, blood uh, the bloodlines one where the alien parasite things, it, which is it's kind of bad, but I remember reading originally reading it when my brother got got the annuals uh, for those DC comics and being intrigued. <laughs> mm. So I, I want to actually read it. I, I don't care if it's bad. And it's just, I have access to pretty much like practically everything, not everything, but a very, 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 very large portion of, of everything. So, um, that's another thing I'm doing during my downtime and work is reading those comics. So, mm. but uh, especially if you if you enjoy comics or like you've been seeing the MCU or DC EU um, uh, stuff and want to kind of like read some of the the original stuff that they're from, these are great way to jump in. Just like even if you just like subscribe one month read a whole bunch of shit and then cancel <laughs> rude um well that's kind of the point nowadays with subscriptions like they you you can't get the they don't necessarily offer discount like they they may have like a week trial or something like that mm -hmm. but then after that they don't really have any other discount for like you can't mm -hmm. necessarily get a discount for like subscribing for six months or something like that it's all just like month to month and they're expecting you to subscribe for maybe a month, cancel a couple months later, maybe resubscribe, catch up on your stuff, cancel, you know, they get mm. them here and there. And that's kind of the thing for subscription services nowadays is less trials. Like they'll give you one trial, but as soon as you have that one trial, you can never like get another trial or anything like that so, yeah so but they That's they're fair. expecting that sort of thing it's, it's the on again off again you can kind of like cycle through services that sort of thing so i like it anyways moving on hmm. gary what's your plethora of things that you found <laughs> feeling very attacked um <laughs> No, it's just things that I've watched in the past month. Uh, so from Netflix, um, I watched the series finale season of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. It's called Chilling Adventures oh, nice. of Sabrina Part 4, which I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, I also watched the latest season of Disenchantment on Netflix. Uh, for those that are unaware, it's an animated series. 
it is um, from the creators of uh, The Simpsons, if I recall correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it's this really twisted kind of adult version of uh, talking like in like medieval fairy tale kind of stuff. Um, and it does mashups with uh, steampunk at some point. Anyways, you have to watch it. It's it's funny and inappropriate in several ways. Uh, I also watched the final series season of Carmen Sandiego. Um, the newest version that's an animated thing for kids. Uh, so the very, very end, I'm just going to say this, the very last episode feels like they kind of try to wrap everything up. I have a feeling like they weren't being extended or anything, so they they knew this was the end. Um, but they did <clears throat> kind of in the very last minute or two like make available potential future i guess anyways Mm -hmm. you know how that goes um so what i want to say about netflix what annoys me is for some reason some of the content says parts like chilling adventures of sabrina part four as opposed to season and it confuses Mm -hmm. me because all three of these are netflix like creations like they were made for netflix and it's the as much as I know, it's the only place you can get them. So what confuses me is Carbon San Diego actually called them seasons, and yet Disenchantment and Chili Adventures is pretty called them parts. I'm like, I don't understand. Like, but they were seasons. You didn't roll them all out at the same time, like once a year. Hello. Anyways, mm-hmm. so yeah. Um, so those are some of the things I watched over on YouTube. Um, I just last night watched. Uh, so there's a channel called Philosophy Tube. That. Friends of mine or acquaintances of mine have kind of posted every now and then um, about. And so I ended up subscribing and following. And lo and behold, yesterday's episode is called Identity, a Trans Coming Out Story. Hmm. And the owner, creator, and host of Philosophy 2 came out as trans. Wow. And... Uh, it's a big freaking deal. Um, and they are based in the UK and, uh, she has said that, um, you know, she recognizes that by coming out that she makes herself, um, an unintentional spokesperson, um, and that the, you know, there will be attention drawn and she is going to, uh talk about like healthcare issues and other things that are you know of importance for trans community individuals in the uk um because they have some things that uh they do not have some things that we do have here in the us um in terms of like recognition and rights and some different stuff apparently so um yeah so i uh i was really um surprised and pleased um to watch and to see uh you know this um this revelation uh come about i've kind of wondered um in watching over the past year what the situation was um what's really intriguing is that a lot of people apparently have felt that the male representation throughout the series of 7 years now was a well balanced masculine representation Mm -hmm. and that um abigail thorne uh talks early on about the the complexity of that because they would be told in comments and to their face and when they would meet people about how much they appreciated their approach and Mm -hmm. abigail is an actress and has been an actress like um and a couple episodes ago talked about like the different jobs they've had over the years so uh, kudos to her. It's already had over a half a million views. It hasn't even been 24 hours that it's been out. Wow. Um, it's nice. a big, big deal. Um, I'm so proud of her for uh, doing that. I still, like, uh, it's so strange. Like, if you've ever seen a film uh, or a movie, a TV show, anything, and or even, like, a magic act, and you kind of know what's going to happen or you think you know what's going to happen, and you still go on a journey. That's kind of what this um this half hour uh, video was like. Um, she has a Patreon uh, called Philosophy Two, but she she came out um and uh, has a beautiful headshot, of course, um that has uh replaced uh, some of the the logo imaging and stuff like that. So um and she talks very frankly uh in the second half about you know she realizes this 
could be polarizing for some of the audience and the followers and all that comes with that. And, and so um, it's very interesting because in the very beginning, the comment is like, I'm going to talk about like trans from a personal perspective. And if you've watched the series, like if you've watched some of the other philosophy tube stuff, you, it, it's, it's, it is based on philosophy. So a lot of it has been acting over the years, like portraying different characters and personalities. So I found it like, okay, so is this like, is the first part of this really real or is this like another character? Do you know what I mean? Like, so it was, it was so, it's so brilliantly done to like kind of uh, make you think and pay attention. And anyways, so I wanted to give recognition to that. And then last but not least, um, Damon, last month you had a suggested canvas, mm -hmm. um, which is a short, or I think it's actually being called a Pixar Spark, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, something like that. On Disney Plus. And I did watch it. It was very touching. Um, and then I realized that I, last month, I don't think I gave recognition uh, to Disney's soul. Um, mm. And I really recommend that people watch it. I thought it was so, so well done. I know that, you know, nothing is perfect in the world. And there are critics out there that have some issues or whatever. But if you watch the extra content that comes with soul, um, they made a cultural <laughs> trust, I want to say. Um, I'm forgetting the right words, but Pixar actually put together a group of individuals of per all persons of color to talk about getting it right and mm -hmm. like the aspects of, of black culture and how to show black culture because Pixar admitted that like the people making the decisions are not black mm -hmm. and they didn't want to misstep understandably um and i think disney overall especially um perhaps pixar with some of the more recent films has kind of been realizing like we need to be moving in a, in a forward trajectory and making improvements and uh it's it's very interesting to me how uh you look back on on the oeuvre of everything that disney's ever made and you're kind of like whoa yeah there's some very very uh messy things in the past because they are culturally relevant of the time in which they're made. It doesn't make them right. Yeah. But they existed because that's what entertainment wise was considered acceptable by the majority of individuals and those that were being repressed were, you know, basically shown in a negative light. So I find it interesting that, you know, that their, their perspective is like trying to correct that. Um, and mm. the reason I say that it's not perfect is because it's, you know, it's going to take time. Yeah to get that but i will say like i was really pleasantly surprised um with how well the film dealt with black culture and i was like and my thought was like there has to be black people involved in this like there's just some things you can't not sh like the way things were shown i was like yes there was definitely folks involved someone, go ahead someone did some homework <laughs> either someone did a whole shit ton of homework or they had to specifically seek out like folks like because right it, time, to, yeah. time to look at the credits well <laughs> i mean there was there production was consultations things, right there were there were things done like in scenes i mean just like the sense of community camaraderie mm -hmm. um familiarity mm -hmm. um one of the the more humorous moments of the film has to do with a barbershop um mm -hmm. but like i mean it was just and I, I can't say this, what I know of, which is I'm going to own a lot of my ignorance, I thought it was so well, like, represented. Like, I, I, I thought there was authenticity to it, not just an attempt, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, so anyways, I wanted to make sure that I kind of recognize that because I liked it yeah. um, as well. And, oh, and I just spotted, and I don't know if you knew this, Damon, um, August Wilson has a commemorative stamp from the US Postal Service. Um, I think it. that just uh, yes. happened in the past uh, yeah. few days or something. Um, it's the 44 stamp in the Black Heritage series, it says. It's currently available for purchase. Sorry, I'm like going to the website and looking it up. Um, yeah, it was issued three days ago. 
Yeah. Issue date 128, 2021. There we go. And uh, for those of you that are, um, are still paying attention to us, uh, in the nerd verse, uh, Star Wars Droids has a whole collection of stamps as well. Just in case there you're like, you, you know, uh, thinking, you know, about wanting to get stamps, even though you may not send much out uh, very much. I, over the past two or three years, have bought sheets, like a whole like sheet of a collection or whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's a, a thing. But that's it. Huh. That's, that's it. it. That's it. That's it for the show. Boop, what do you boop. know? Hey, play ways to contact us. Give us your feedback. You can do that over on our website, CubsOutLoud.com. You can share us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 361 we'll talk. It's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can uh, find us at various social media outlets at it comes out loud in the appropriate place the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, you can also join our entourage chat where Owen is posting every single one of these links as we're doing them live. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Owen. Uh, you can also get them on the website, but uh, our telegram chats at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can subscribe to our Google calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col so you can see when we're planning on doing these shows and what might be coming up next. Uh, you can find various uh, merchandise such as Cubs Out Loud shirts uh, and Consent is My Foreplay shirts. Hey, that's the drag one, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you can also get hats and 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 mugs, which I don't have the, my mug with me, but I have a mug. Um, and various other stuff at uh, Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud or Zazzle. Insert your country's local top level domain here. Um, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or if you want to send some cash you can uh, send us some via paypal.me slash comes out loud uh, you can rate and subscribe to us on apple Podcasts, google play and audible and amazon um, and <laughs> spotify did i say spotify i don't remember um, yeah, in any fine. case it's there um, and i'm sure you can find it on any of your podcast platforms of choice uh, you can find me anywhere in the internet as box up box pu puppy box cup box something or other and Windgem w y n d g e m over on twitch on wednesdays and thursdays during the day because i'm usually doing something at night but on thursday nights you do get to see me because we're playing some bnd mm. damon um, if you wish to get in touch with me, um, you can find me as Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is not safe for work. Just not. Uh, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. Um, if you want to follow the stuff that is not safe for work, uh, you would just put three X's at the end. That's GearBear73XXX. And with that, uh, say good afternoon, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>